So let's take a closer look at the distribution of scores in central tendency, uh, because I think that it's sort of hard to picture what some of this means without looking at some actual uh, studies and graphs and so on. And uh, again, being able to read these graphs and see how they're, dis how they're displayed is going to be really important uh, to understanding data and understanding what it may mean and allowing us to predict how these studies and the information contained therein may help us improve our professional practice. So let's talk a little bit about how this data is displayed. So often when there are measures taking, taken about a population and then presented with means and standard deviations and ranges and the things that we were just talking about in the previous presentation, they're often distributed or shown graphically or visually in what's called a box plot or a box and whisker plot. Um, this shows what these boxes and, and whiskers mean. And then this shows, uh, again, a, a real example from a study. I have this uh, uh, cited at the end if you're interested, but we'll talk about both here. First off, when you see these box and whisker plots, uh, the box is this part, uh, and then the whisker are the lines that extend beyond that. Let's talk about the whiskers first. The whiskers show us the, uh, uh, the range of scores. So they show us the spread of scores and the range. So they mark the whisker, the bottom part of the whisker shows the lowest score. The top of the whisker shows the highest score. So when I look at this graph, I can see where the scores fell from top to bottom. Okay, I can see that the lowest was just below 40. The highest was, you know, uh, uh, about just below 65. So that tells us the highest and the lowest score. Most often we're not interested in the best and the worst score. The um, box itself shows us where the middle 50% of the population fell. So uh, it shows uh, this is the lower quartile, the middle lower quartile. This is the um, top middle quartile. So there's another quartile here that goes to the bottom whisker and another quartile here. So 25% of the scores were here, 25% of the scores were here, 25% here, 25% here. But this shows us where 50% of the people fell. So most of the scores, or half, sorry, I should say, half of the scores fell within the box. So that's important to understand. That shows us where we were. The middle of the line shows us where the median was. It shows us the middle score was right here. So half the people fell below that, half above, okay? So uh, that's what that uh, box and whisker shows us. So what does this show us? Let's make it practical. This uh, study is kind of interesting. What they were trying to do was create a way to predict how good a uh, Australian rules football player is based on a number of tests that they called like the athletic ability assessment or something along the line. So AAA. So they created a test that gave them points for like a 40 yard dash, a pro agility drill, and so on. They tried to find a group of tests and measurements such as height and weight and so on, and uh, give the, all of those different measurements points to determine how good this person might be. They then used their test and compared non-starters to starters. So they calculated the values for both of these groups. Each of these dots, which is often what you'll see also on these box and whisker plots, is a person. So there were three, it looks like three people in the non-starter group that scored you know, 64. Uh, there was another one here that scored 60. And then they took a mean and uh, computed the quartiles and so on. So the red line shows the, uh, is the whisker. It shows, again, the lowest score to the highest score. The middle line is the median. So half of the non-starters scored, what is that, you know, 50, uh, uh, 52, you know, um, half, the, the middle score is 52, so half were above, half were below. 25% of the non-starters fell in this box, 25% fell in this box, okay? For the uh, starters, we see the formula that they used, their score returned a higher median score, which again was somewhere between, uh, you know, maybe four, 57 or so. Um, and uh, they were much tight, tighter in their uh, distribution. You know, were, uh, the quartiles were much uh, 
uh, smaller. So it seemed that starters uh, certainly fell within a much smaller range of scores. So again, we can see how this tells us a few things. It tells us the mean or the median scores were d definitely higher for the starters, and it tells us that uh, you know the top 50% of starters. So that's everybody above this line. The top 50% of starters uh, scored better than the top 25% of the non-starters. So it really seems that this measurement might be have some use in determining who has the, the most potential as a player. And that's what they were attempting to do, to do here. So anyway, um, that's how to read these box and whisker plots. Kind of interesting. And it does convey a lot of information uh, in a small amount of area. So I often won't look at the actual numerical results as much as I'll look at these figures to kind of see what, I, what, uh, uh, what the data is telling me. The data is typically displayed also as means and standard deviations. So let's just talk about that here real briefly um, and uh, what this table means. Again, I don't even know what these uh, were, were studying, but this is just demographic data about a population that was used in a study. Obviously, they studied uh, men and women, and for some reason they, they split them up, so that must have been an important part of the study. And it tells us, let's, let's talk about mass. So this is their body weight. So how much did they weigh? Uh, and these are uh, in, in kilograms. So the men on average weighed 80.47 kilograms. The women, 67 kilograms. That makes sense, right? They're typically lighter uh, than the men. And uh, the range of, of their scores, this is the standard deviation, was uh, about seven, right? 6.93. So the average guy weighed 80 uh, kilograms plus or minus seven kilograms. We're gonna see that one standard deviation each direction incorporates about maybe 70% of the population. So, so about 70% of the people were between uh, 73 and 87 kilograms for the men. For the women, they were a little bit more variable in, in weight, but still about seven uh, kilograms. And therefore, we can see what their range was. And uh, So again, that's how we can read these tables. Another measure they did, they wanted to see if the subjects, the men and the women, were significantly different from one another in, in these measures. And they found that in both height and weight, the women were significantly different than the men. Makes sense, right? They were lighter and uh, shorter in stature in this population. Now, this distribution of, of, of scores, I've shown you a few different figures that demonstrated this, right? They all looked similar to this curve. Um, the bell curve is basically what you get when you take a bunch of people and we measure some aspect of their performance, we get the mean, and we measure how far away they are from the mean. So this isn't the range of actual scores. This is how far scores of each individual person differed from the mean. And that gives us what's called a distribution curve, okay? And that just is this here. So uh, again, I'm not that worried that you understand how you calculate the distribution curve or how you calculate a standard deviation. But suffice it to say that, again, the majority of the people the majority of the measures typically are going to fall in this type of a pattern, giving us what's called a normal curve or a bell curve, where most of the people, their scores are close to the mean, and there's far fewer people as we get further away from the mean. And this is typically what we see if we measure body weight within an average population, we see there's a mean body weight and most people fall around that mean. As we get further away from that average body weight, there's fewer and fewer people, right? So that's what this is showing here is this normal kind of bell curve. Most of our inferential statistics, you know, we'll talk more about inferential statistics in the next units, um, uh, rely on or assume that data is normally distributed. And it isn't always normally distributed, especially if you're dealing with extreme people, which we often are. They aren't normally distributed. We have the people that fall along the extremes. You know, we're studying NFL athletes or professional athletes or world-class sprinters or runners or whatever. You know, they don't necessarily fall in this normal distribution. 
But anyway, most uh, data does tend to fall close to this normal distribution with most of the scores clustered around the mean and then fewer and fewer as we get further away from the mean. What these numbers mean at the bottom are standard deviations. So in a normal curve, uh, we see the majority of people, uh, again, are within one standard deviation either direction from the mean. So most of the people fall within one standard deviation. Uh, about 95% of the people fall within two standard deviations of the mean. So again, that's how standard deviation gives us an idea of where people are in relation to the mean score of a particular measure. So the normal or bell curve, in a normal curve, the mean, the median, and the mode are all the same. So in a normal distributed population, the mean and the median are going to be norm are going to be very similar measures, and the mode also is going to be one of the most common measures. So the in a normal curve, in most measures, we're going to see the mean, the median, and the mode are fairly similar in score. In a true normal curve, they're identical, but there's very few examples where it's I, it's a true normal curve. It's usually close to a normal curve. The curve, uh, the normal curve, is symmetrical and smooth. So we see that it, you know, it rises and falls at the same level. And again, that's what a normal curve is. Sixty-eight percent of the scores of a population fall within one standard deviation. So within uh, one standard deviation, again, almost seventy percent of the people will fall between these two lines. So so fairly close to the mean. 95% will fall within two standard deviations. So again, uh, that's why standard deviation is helpful because it gives us an idea of where the people are clustered around the mean and how variable they are. So in this curve, the curve's pretty steep. If you remember, we talked about that. So most of the people are really close in terms of their measurement from the standard deviation or from the mean. Uh, a flatter curve would mean they're spread out more. But always, standard deviation tells us how big that spread is. Much of inferential statistics, as I said, is based upon this concept of a normal curve. Um, and when you use a computer uh, program to calculate statistics, it will actually evaluate your data as part of the process to see if it is normally distributed.